you know, just keep going. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Yeah. I'll just talk loudly. All right. So, like in Germany, you have this idea that uh, Jews run the world through compound interest, and they're like, "Oh my God, that's terrible. We need to get rid of them." But uh, I actually I like to I like to travel a lot, and I went to Japan. And like they believe similar things, but their reaction to the same information is completely different. They're like, oh my god, these people run the economy using compound interest. We have to get some of them over here tomorrow. Do you have any Jews? Does anyone know any Jewish people? They're incredible. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you call a Jewish lawyer? You call him a lawyer. What else would you call him? <laughs> you guys are part of the problem. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, uh, two old Jewish ladies are eating at a restaurant. Uh, their waiter walks by and he's like, ladies, is anything all right? <laughs> uh, a rabbi is talking to a moil. A moil is like a guy that does circumcision. Right. The rabbi is asking the moil, he's like, what do you pull in a year? You know, what do you make? And the moil goes, I just keep the tips. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Uh, my, friend, my friend John is Irish Catholic. I'm Jewish. After this, we're going to open up a law firm called uh, Guilt and Shame Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, I was thinking the other day that uh, the Ponzi scheme, right? The, you know, that's the pyramid scheme. How crazy is that that that's not a, named after a Jewish person, right? Like we get stereotyped all the time for white collar crime. And we don't even get the thing named after us. It's like we get all the blame and none of the credit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they tell you you're going to have to work twice as hard in this country, but they don't say, no, and like, they're going to forget all your inventions. Whatever. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I thought a fair amount about Jesus for a Jewish guy. Uh, I think he must have had a really good sense of humor. Uh, <laughs> and here's why. Uh, he had a single mom growing up, right? Yeah. So people must have been giving him shit constantly. So he already can dish it out as well as he can take it. Okay. That's one. On top of that, he's a carpenter. Jewish carpenter, right? So you know, yeah. they're already doing that guy talk humor at another level. Right? So he's got that part down. Then he becomes this charismatic leader, speaking here and there. You know, that has to be pretty great for your stage and your timing and your speaking and chops, all that. So he has all that covered. By the time he's on the cross, he must have been just like a stand-up comic level. Like, people are probably like, have you seen Jesus do his Julius Caesar impression? It's incredible. He kills. All three days, people were just like, I got to see his Pontius Pilate impression. And we were just coming in and out for those impressions. Um, yeah. And uh, this is Jesus if he was in Zoom therapy, which I do a lot of. <laughs> so I'm still having issues around having never met my father. Uh, my mom's like a really big presence in my life, but she gives me a lot of crap for still living in her house, even though I'm like 30. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so it, it's tough. I had to go on the run with, uh, from the Romans with my apostles, and we were eating dinner tonight, and I was looking around at them, and I was like, I feel like one of you is going to betray me. <laughs> <laughs> the therapist is like, let's up your Prozac. Jesus, Jesus, let me ask you, do you get paranoid often? How does that make you feel? <laughs> Um, I love music. Um, very into Bruce Springsteen because my family loves him. Uh, I also am a little worried about his health because for about 30 years it sounds like something stuck in his throat. Like, I, I, you know, if I ever meet him, I just want to ask him if he has like a good ear, nose, and throat guy, right? Can I offer you a lozenge, Bruce? No, oh, I'm good. I'm fine. <laughs> I got a sock in my mouth. <laughs> it sounds like. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, sex is funny, right? Like, genders look at it completely differently, I feel like. Like, women kind of look at sex, like, as though they're buying a house, right? Yeah. Like, they weigh all the options. Do I see myself here long term? Is it big enough? Et cetera, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, men, men are different, right? They kind of look at it like food, you know, where they're like, I'm hungry. Okay, now I'm full. <laughs> right? That's the whole thought process. There's not a lot that goes into the male thought process. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. So, oh yeah, there's this old guy. He um, he's having this one night stand with a woman, and uh, he they go like eight or nine or ten times, and she's just like, "You're incredible. You must be like in your 90s. Like, how are you doing?" This? She just went like ten times in a row. He goes, I went 10 times in a row? Oh, <laughs> so he yeah. 
Because <laughs> you forgot it. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, yeah. I was watching a lot of movies recently. And um, I feel like old movies, uh, they used to have, like, fat dudes be, like, really strong. They'd be like, you're 300 pounds. You can lift 500 pounds. You can bend steel. Uh, and now they're just really funny. And, like, if they could just be repre represented as people at some point, that would be cool. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, um, it's hard to tell which type of being typecast is worse, the old or the new with that one. Um, I was watching YouTube videos about Star Wars, and one of the interesting ones uh, had a headline like, Kubak history reads like a surreal nightmare. And like, I'm such a nerd that I was like, you've got me at surreal nightmare. <laughs> That's my jam. <laughs> um, Oh yeah, okay. I'm gonna do a couple impressions, uh, and, then, and then I'll get out of here. Um, let's see, so this is, um, this is Trump. All right, I'm gonna try and do my Trump. Oh, no. Not all of them, all of them. I have to try while I'm not here. Absolutely. Right. My throat's kind of dry. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. Okay, it's not all the way done, but whatever. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was watching this movie the other day, it was called, like, uh, like, Lord of the Rings, I think it was the third one, and it was like a documentary or something, you know, I watch a lot of documentaries, and uh, I'm really smart, so I watch a ton of stuff like that, and, um, my guys were like, Donald, you're so smart, they tell me that constantly, anyway, so I was watching this movie, and uh, they got these guys in it, and, uh, they're like green ghosts, basically, but, like, they can interact with people, but people can't interact with them. They're like, <coughs> not invisible. What's the other one? Like impenetrable? Yeah, that one. <laughs> right. So like stuff can't pass through them. So I was thinking for our new army, we need to get an army of ghosts, right? I want a ghost force. Ghost force X, we'll call it. And we'll have a bunch of green guys. We'll have the best green ghost guys that I saw from this documentary. We'll get them fighting for us, right? And no one will be able to shoot them because, like, they're ghosts or whatever, right? So the solid stuff isn't going to pass through them. Right? So I'm having my top men on it. They tell McDonald, that's not physically possible. And I said, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was watching another documentary the other day. Uh, it's called Mars Attack, Tim Burton. And, uh, right, yeah, so there are these, like, little Martians in it. And they're, like, two to three feet tall. So, you know, they're pretty small. They say ack, ack, ack a lot. So I was, like, quick to rule them out. But, turns out, they have space lasers. Now... Who doesn't need a space laser? I ask you that. So we're going to reach out to the Martians post haste, get our top guys with speaking with the Martians. I'm offering them Trump golf courses. I'm offering them Trump vodka. They can have as many Trump steaks as they want. Give me the space lasers, Martians. All right, that's my time. Thanks, guys. Aww.